couple of questions uh, that we kind of gleaned from in the audience, <clears throat> and I'm going to summarize a couple of them. Uh, this one is more for Hemming. Uh, Hemming, th thanks very much for your very astute and interesting observations. One of the comments that you had made is that generally there's no, uh, there was very little media bias to worry about. Uh, one of the concerns, though, is that it's not just America that has media bias, but there's also the European media, which as you recognize is also part of social media. So that's infiltrating uh, the way we filter the news as well. Uh, but in Europe, I think there's a distinction. I think that it's very anti-Israel. That's, I think, a, a common perception, at least, about European view of Israel. Uh, to what extent does that factor into your thinking? And I would throw that also to Larry as well. So but why don't we start off with Kemi? Well, I don't think I, uh, I uh, ignore or deny the fact that there is anti-Israel bias, especially in the European media. I just don't know that it exists in and of itself. It's not that the, uh, there's a reason why there's more anti-Israel bias in Europe than there is in America, just as the public opinion in, uh, in Europe is less supportive of Israel uh, for a whole variety of reasons, which are not necessarily because the media is biased. There's historical reasons, the closeness to the Middle East, the, Arab, the Muslim populations that are growing, and so on and so forth. But nonetheless, I am pointing out to you that despite years and years and years of anti-Israel bias in the European media, relations with Europe are improving. The support, the criticism of Israel is decreasing. Uh, uh, the willingness of Europe to just have bilateral relations with Israel without necessarily tying it to concessions on the peace is growing. And this has nothing to do with the media, just like uh, the previous had nothing to do with the media. It has to do with historical developments. If these countries grow, the more that, for example, the more that Europeans uh, get agitated by, uh, immig by, by Muslim immigration, the more they will tend to view Israel more favorably. Um, I don't think that we need to, I don't think there is some cabal of newspaper editors who sit around and think, okay, well, we're, this is the way we're going to uh, do Israel wrong. I just don't think that that exists. People belong to their surroundings, they reflect their surroundings, and intellect, liberal intellectuals in Europe are very critical of Israel, and that gets reflected in the newspapers. I'm just saying that uh, 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 it, it's not very high on my list of priorities. Um, people want to have a good image for Israel. I am an Israeli, I want Israel to be good. I don't care so much about the image. All right, Larry, your take. Well, imagine how people would feel about Israel were the media fair and balanced, and they aren't. <laughs> uh, years ago, a professor of economics at a school in, um, in Illinois received a four-paid petition, a BDS petition outlining all of the alleged atrocities that Israelis were committing against the poor Palestinians, and even the word apartheid was used. He put together, and, and, and was signed by 900 professors, he put together a four-page petition outlining the atrocities that Arab countries had committed against women. The suppression of women, can't drive, can't work, uh, can't be educated, and so forth, sent it to the very same people who had signed the first petition. He knew there wouldn't be nearly, nearly as many signatures, but he was shocked when virtually nobody wanted to sign it. This is what's going on in this country. The fact that John Kerry recently said, Israel doesn't want peace, and he wasn't hammered, he wasn't skewered, is a scandal. The fact that Jimmy Carter can write a book and use the word apartheid in the title is a scandal. Even he ultimately had to recall the book and change the title. The idea that there are people seriously referring to Israelis as engaging in apartheid is offensive. You have any idea? <laughs> During apartheid, were there members of the equivalent of the Knesset in South Africa? Was there a member of a black person who was on the Supreme Court in South Africa? I mean, it's absurd. And the fact that people can say this and, and people on college campuses and professors can embrace this is offensive. And the fact that the media... <laughs> the fact that the media does not go ballistic over this is what I mean by bias. Donald Trump yesterday made a joke about Elizabeth Warren, called her Pocahontas. Oh my goodness, he is a racist. 
But you can have John Kerry, the former Secretary of State, publicly say that Israel, quote, is not interested in peace? Crickets. Mm. Offensive. All right. Um, a couple, uh, just yeah, one more I, question. I, oh, you wanted to follow up, Tammy? Yeah, I mean, I've been polite until now, but you All know, right. there's a limit. There are many people in Israel, including my own newspaper, which r s believes that the government of Israel, at this point in time, does not want peace. That is not an outrageously anti-Israeli statement to make, and it should not be lumped together, in my opinion, with claims that Israel engages in apartheid. Now, it, please, people, please. But, I would. <laughs> but, but, folks, folks, please be respectful. Finally, you know. And so I think that there's a danger that you lump together statements that are critical of Israeli government policies with statements that are indeed offensive towards Israel. I just don't think we should put them all together, and I do not think that John Kerry saying that the Israeli government doesn't want peace is something that one should, I don't find it offensive, and me and my colleagues find it quite true. Thank you. <laughs> all right, so. Um, well, oh, how, how, how at the waning days of the Jimmy Carter, uh, of the Bill Clinton administration, uh, Dennis Ross, the envoy, goes over to the Middle East, does shuttle diplomacy between the Palestinian side and the Israeli side, and everything that the, that the Palestinians say they want, they get. A continuous state. Shared supervision of, of, uh, of Jerusalem. Uh, compensation for the so-called people that left Israel uh, in order to deal with this alleged right of return issue. Everything they wanted, except for one requirement. Requirement was that Yasser Arafat had to renounce violence. He wouldn't do it. The idea that Israel doesn't want peace and would not give land for peace is absurd. And I don't care who says it. All right. I, I have to move on to our next question, and then I, because I want to wrap it up the time was. Um, all right, so there was discussion about the kinds of media that are conservative on the one hand, liberal on the other. Uh, Larry, uh, you, you had mentioned that the conservative outlets are much uh, more, uh, there are far fewer conservative outlets than the liberal outlets. Uh, Walter Cronkite you know, talked about the former days of ABC News and such. Um, and I, I guess the question that's posed is, uh, because um, Remy was talking about um, how the media is still out there um, and it's, it's, that, it's, that it's not biased. I mean, it's a clear distinction between the two of you. One of the questions I have, and, and Remy brought this up, that if you ask the Palestinian authorities and the Arabs that they will show you you know, statistic after statistic that the liberals, sorry, that, the, um, that it's very pro-Israel. But, and this is now a question to you as well, Chemi, um, I mean, North Korea would present only good news about itself as well. So is this a question, perhaps, more of democracy versus dictatorship than it is between Israel on the one hand and its, and its uh, hostile Arab neighbors on the other? I'll let, I'll let Larry start off with that. I'm not quite sure I understand the question. All right. <laughs> Thank don't. you. Uh, is, is the notion of freedom, is that at play here? America, we believe, I believe, is a far more free country, and Obviously. therefore far much more media outlets that are conservative. Even as it's so, Larry, you're saying that's still more media bias than we talked about Europe. To what extent, and again, the, the Palestinian question that we talked about before, is that at play here? The democracy versus dictatorship. Well, well Brock, certainly uh, Hemi is right that there are a lot more uh, outlets now than ever before. Uh, you can get a pers conservative perspective faster and easier than ever before. There's the Washington Free Beacon, there's the Washington Examiner, there's Breitbart, the Daily Caller, there's lots of outlets. However, the most popular show on Fox News before Bill O'Reilly was fired was the O'Reilly Show. Average two and a half million people, maybe. You look at the combined audience of NBC, ABC, and CBS, their half-hour news, you're talking about 30 million, easily. 
Uh, the amount of people watching Fox News is dwarfed by the number of people who don't watch Fox News. Right. And New York Times, CBS, ABC, NBC, the usual suspects, have a disproportionate effect on how we get our news. As I pointed out, 80 to 90 percent of people get their primary news source from one of these left-wing outlets. So they have a disproportionate effect on how we think. And we know that the media affects how we think because, as I mentioned before, there have been a number of studies. One that I thought was pretty interesting was in this book that I mentioned, Left Turn. There are most newspapers, most cities in this country only have one newspaper. Washington, D.C., however, has two. Uh, the Washington Post and the Washington Times. They did a very interesting uh, study. They found out people that subscribed to the Post and they gave them free subscriptions to the Times and people that subscribed to the Times got free subscription to the Post. Would that affect their voting? And it did. Turns out that the household that never got the Washington Post started voting a little bit more liberally than they did before. The houses that never got the Washington Times, the conservative newspaper, began voting dramatically more conservative. Yeah. Conclusion by Tim Grossclose is that the media were truly fair and balanced. The average state would vote the way Texas does, which is eight to 10 points in favor of Republican. That's the effect of bias in the media. All right. All right. Uh, I have to, I mean, what I would like to do is to continue this conversation in our Q&A session that is outside. I'm sorry to, uh, I've been told that we have to uh, stop right now. But I want to thank you both, Larry and Henry. Yeah. If you could both come up, we'd like to uh, give something to you. You do this. All right. What an amazing conversation. I know we all feel very fortunate to be in the room here with, in the morning with you. On behalf of the Jewish National Fund, Doug and I would like to present you with a token of our appreciation. All right. All right. Uh, before we officially conclude, I hope everyone at each table had a chance to make their donation. I'd like to